Hey everyone, welcome to another episode of Fish Door County TV. Well, we've got a really cool show lined up for you guys today. Is we're heading over to do some work with the Wisconsin Department of Natural Resources and do an electroshocking survey on the Menominee River. Now this is a really interesting process to see how the DNR uses this tool to get an overall assessment of the Menominee River and the health of the fishery and to take a look at a lot of different species of fish that move up into the river in this fall season. Stay tuned, it's going to be a really cool show. We'll be back in about one minute. So today we're going to head out and uh, do some shocking on the lower Menominee River here. Um, we're going to, we're targeting brown trout, but we'll be kind of doing an assessment on, on netting several other species that we may see here. Um, as you can see out here, the water levels are really, really low this year. This is the lowest that I've ever seen them in my 10 years with the department. Um, right now the kind of the flows coming from the upper Menominee River we're at about 1900 cubic feet per second um, which is about average for this time of the year but the reason that the water levels are so low in the river is because it's influenced so much by the bay and with the bay and Lake Michigan being at all-time record lows um, obviously the lower river is experiencing those problems too so gets a little tricky when we're doing our shocking surveys because um, we have to maneuver up the first riffle here above Stevenson Island um, and that's really in, historically has been kind of our hot spot for brown trout especially and this year it's going to be a little tricky to get um, to shock a lot of those areas like we used to in the years past. There's a lot of diversity in the Menominee River. Um, things I'd expect to see today are Things like Chinook salmon, um, maybe rainbow trout, coho salmon, brown trout, walleye, whitefish, suckers, smallmouth bass. Um, maybe once in a while you'd see a northern or a muskie in the river. Sturgeon, of course. Um, those are kind of the main species that we'd expect to see up here today. You know guys, we got a chance to see a variety of different species of fish on this survey today. Everything from king salmon to coho salmon to smallmouth bass and a variety of other fish as well. One of the more interesting ones to myself, however, as a fisherman out here in the Bay of Green Bay was the walleyes. We saw a lot of walleyes, some nice fish, and we got a chance to take a look at some of those in the boat and talk to Tammy about the species in general on the Bay of Green Bay. There was a lot of walleye up there, um, probably less than uh, what the guys had seen last week, but still a really good numbers of walleye. If a, if a per person really wanted to fish for them, a good spot would have been right um, on those rocks over there. Um, so this is just kind of a typical size here. We'll see 
how big she is. I guess it's a female, pretty fat, just over 21 inches. Nice looking fish. Saw a lot of those. How long this one is. This under 19. It seems like there's quite a few in the 18 to 21 inch size. Um, here's a young of the year walleye. It's a nice uh, find. Shows that there is some natural reproduction of walleye going on, about eight and a half inches. Um, this is uh, from this year. This is this year's fish. Um, about the standard size we'd see for young of the year um, in this in the Green Bay system. Um, um, again, really, really nice to see that seven and a half inches. Um, good to see some that this spring wasn't a complete bust for walleye. It might have been actually pretty decent. One of the other fish that we got a chance to see today, and they were actually in the biggest numbers of any of the fish that we surveyed, was the whitefish. Now anybody that fishes the Bay of Green Bay through the ice knows how many whitefish are on the system right now. And it was really cool to see these fish up close and personal in that shallow water on the river. We got a chance to take a look at a few in the boat and get some more information about this species and what's really happening on the bay the last 10 years or so with the whitefish. Thousands of whitefish today. Um, this, we're probably getting close to the peak here today. Um, <clears throat> this one's just over 17 inches, um, but literally thousands of these, these guys in here. And, um, our water temperature is around 38 degrees, so it's seemingly about right for them to be up here. The whitefish make their runs up here in the fall, and uh, the, the larval whitefish will start migrating downstream in the springtime. Here's a more of a plump fish. Sometime around the mid-90s, the whitefish started showing up in the Menominee River in uh, some numbers, you know, pretty small numbers documented by the biologist out of Peshtigo at the time. And so he made some notes on, on their numbers because he had never seen them before. And it seems like um, since then their numbers have kind of been going up and up and up. And, um, and now it's, you know, you'll, it's nothing to see thousands of whitefish when we come in here in November. You know guys, we didn't get a chance to see any today, but a couple weeks prior to when we filmed this show, the Wisconsin DNR was on the Menominee River doing similar surveys and they ran into some big numbers of pink salmon. Now pink salmon were actually accidentally introduced to the Great Lakes system and it was kind of interesting to talk to Tammy about what they had found with these numbers of fish in the river this year and get some more information on what's kind of a unique species to the system. A couple of weeks ago we were down here and we got a several dozen pink salmon in our survey and the interesting thing about that is pink salmon um, they were introduced into Lake Superior in the 1960s and they were they were making runs in every odd year they would mature at age two and they would make runs in tributaries in odd years and they were first documented in Wisconsin in 1977 um, not too far from here about five miles away below the Peshtigo Dam and a few pink salmon were showing up here and there um, in the rivers in the fall um, on odd years. And just in recently, in maybe the last 10 years, more are showing up in, in odd and even years. And so some are maturing more quickly. And instead of being mature at age two, they're, they may be maturing sooner. And so a couple of weeks ago, we were getting dozens of them in this lower river here, and we've never seen anything like that. Um, so this is kind of a, a new thing going on. So it'll be interesting to see if this is sort of a one-year phenomenon or if we'll start to see more and more numbers of pink salmon throughout the coming years. One of the most important aspects of this entire process is the boat. Now the way this boat is set up, it really provides the DNR with an effective management tool to assess a specific body of water without harming any of the fish involved. And that's really an important part of it. The way this boat functions, it simply passes over a certain section of water emitting an electric current 
and it stuns the fish briefly enough that they rise towards the surface, allowing the DNR to net them if they so choose. But if not, once the boat passes over, these fish quickly regain their senses and take off as if nothing had happened. Tammy gave us a quick overview of how the boat is set up and how the whole thing functions. All right, this is uh, what our typical boom shocker boat looks like. Um, these are actually handmade um, in Wisconsin by our crews in Wisconsin DNR. So um, uh, just a basic work boat is purchased and uh, railings are welded on the side and, and they, everything is basically hand built um, by our crews that work out of some of the other offices. So what happens, how this thing works is um, there's an operator in the back, there's two dippers up front, and these orange booms, when we're actually operating, they'll swing out and lower into the water. Um, you'll see these droppers. Um, there's usually around 10 or 12 droppers that um, help to conduct the electricity. And so there's an onboard generator that powers the electricity. So what happens when the two booms are out in front of the boat, there, it creates an electrical current between the booms and the, the frame of the boat right in front there. It really just shocks the fish. So today, some of the things that we saw um, most notable are thousands of lake whitefish that we saw um, spawning right below the dam and in, even in some areas right out front here that you can see um, that are areas that we saw a lot of whitefish. Um, we were here last week and the numbers of whitefish are way up from last week. Our water temperature is around 38 degrees, um, so it's, it's obviously getting a lot colder. We saw quite a few walleye um, in the upper teens and low 20-inch size range and probably even some in the larger than that. We didn't see any brown trout, however, and that's one of the things that, we, that I was really interested in, in assessing. Um, but we were here last week and we got 14 browns. The week before we got 12. Um, and so, you know, maybe the, the browns are kind of on their way out now. Um, one of the theories that I have um, on maybe the, one of the reasons why we didn't see that many browns um, this fall compared to falls that we normally have seen, it's, it was typical for us to see 50 to 75 browns in one shocking survey in just a couple of hours shocking like we did um, years ago. However, in 2010, we changed our stocking strategy for brown trout and we began offshore stocking fish because we had um, really low survival rates when we were stocking the fish in rivers like the Menominee. Um, we were stocking those fish in the spring right on top of the big walleye run. So there was a was suspected a lot of predation going on of those fish. So in 2010, we started uh, moving those fish offshore and we're seeing really much improved catch rates um, by anglers who are trolling in the summer and in the spring months. Um, however, one of the downsides of the offshore stocking strategy um, may be exactly what we're seeing. What we saw today is fewer browns returning and making their runs into the rivers because they weren't stocked into those rivers. And so that's kind of my theory on why we're not seeing as many browns in the rivers. Many of the browns that we did see the last two weeks um, were stocked in the Menominee Marina. Um, they had floy tags, uh, several of them had floy tags on them. Um, and they were, this was a joint project that we did with the m, &M Great Lakes Sport Fishing Club and floy tagging many of their brown trout that they stocked for the kids derby. So it was interesting that we had, um, you know, high proportions of those floy tagged fish. I think last week we had three floy tagged fish out of 14. So that kind of tells me that those fish that were just stocked a few miles from here in the Menominee Marina, they're coming back here into the Menominee River. So, um, so I think that's part of what's going on, why our numbers are low in the fall, but we're, we're hopefully making up for it in the summer and spring fishery out in the bay. Well, another great day on the water. I hope you enjoyed today's show and found it as interesting as I did. This whole process is something I was really interested in getting a closer look at and to see how effective it can be as a fisheries management tool here in the state of Wisconsin. 
We want to thank the DNR again for letting us come along, and we especially want to thank you guys for watching. Be sure to tune in again soon for another brand new episode of Fish Star County TV.